how is he doing today? I'm fine, how are you? So I just want to let you know that we are, um, go I'm going to be recording this video. And at any point that you feel uncomfortable, you know, you can ask me to stop. Okay. So the purpose of this video, this session, is to go over your treatment plan. Um, last time we discussed, you informed me that you had, when you reached your diagnosis of cancer, mm -hmm. you know, how you was made aware of that diagnosis and how it made you feel. Right. So this session, you know, we're going to go more in depth on what was your feelings okay. of that diagnosis and what the treatment plan looked like. Okay. So... You, you know, tell me more about the treatment plan when you was diagnosed with cancer. Well, what happened was um, we were scheduled to have an appointment with her, but traffic got the same mm -hmm. issues there. We mm -hmm. were late. So we had to reschedule because she was leaving to go away. And she said she would do a phone consult. So she did the phone consultation the next day. And she presented me my options. She gave me three options. Option one was surgery. Option two was chemo. Option three was radiation. So I hear you saying that you was presented with the options of what the diagnosis, of what, about what the treatment plan was going to entail. Correct. And you saying that it was um, chemo, radiation, or surgery. Right. Okay. Can you tell me more about that? Um. So when I asked her what the surgery would entail, she explained that it was an eight plus hour long okay. surgery, okay. which would entail removing my uterus, my ovaries, my anus, mm -hmm. and I don't remember what the other option, what other part was, but mm -hmm. basically taking all of my insides. Mm -hmm. um, eight hours, and then I would spend at least three weeks in the hospital to recover and to learn how to use the colostomy bags. Mm -hmm. She said my second option was radiation, being that I had radiation prior. Mm -hmm. And my third option was chemo, which I had, always, I had prior as well. Um, I had, in my head, I was like, I'm not doing no surgery. I already knew I wasn't doing that. That was an option because I was like, um, one, I don't want to be away from home for three weeks plus, and then lay it on somebody's table under anesthesia for eight hours. That was an option. So I opted to do either the ra radiation or the chemo. So we scheduled an appointment to set up consults with her in office and get treatment started. Okay. So, you know, you just said, you know, you gave me the three options on what the treatment plan would look like. And you pretty much said that you did not want to do surgery at Correct. all. Correct. Okay. How did that make you feel with choosing the type of treatment plan? Because before, in the prior session, you had mentioned that you were scared to death. Right. I had had cancer before. So I knew what chemo entails, and I knew what radiation entails. Mm -hmm. Surgery, I kind of know what surgery is, but mm -hmm. the depth of the surgery that she was talking about would have meant being under anesthesia mm -hmm. for eight hours. And I was already scared to death, so I mm -hmm. felt like, oh my God, what happens if I die on this table being under for so long? Mm -hmm. Or there's other complications while she's doing the surgery. And then an extra three weeks in the hospital to recover mm -hmm. from just the surgery itself. Not even learning how to use and care for the colostomy bag. I was like, no. They, they, mm -hmm. I, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't mm -hmm. want to have to live with having these bags for the rest of my life. No. Wasn't an option. I was like, that's off the table. Shoot me now if it came down to it. <laughs> Point blank. <like. laughs> so are you saying surgery was not an option? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Um, how did that make you feel as far as you say, okay, surgery is not an option. So I'm going to, you, you went with the chemo. I went with the chemo. Exactly. What the, what the chemo plan entail? What, what, what was that going to look like? She said it was going to be intense. Um, so I was like, well, I know what chemo is. So, I was kind of used to what it would entail. I'd probably be nauseous here and not have an appetite. Mm -hmm. I was fine with that. I was like, okay, maybe I could lose some pounds. Mm -hmm. Hey, works for me. <laughs> but then she said, um, I would have to have a minor surgery, in, in an outpatient mm -hmm. surgery, to have a port inserted. Because the chemo that I was mm -hmm. getting 
was so powerful and so strong, mm -hmm. it would have to go through the port. If it went through, because I, I didn't want I didn't want to have another surgery point blank. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. she explained it, talking with my fiance at the time or whatever. You know, he was like, "Well, you're gonna do it. I don't care what you say. How you feel about it?" Um, because she said if they went through the vein, which they did the first time, because I had to have the treatment started mm -hmm. soon. That first treatment, they monitor it real carefully because if it leaked outside of the vein, I could lose on my arm. I could lose my limb because that's how strong of a medicine it was. So I was like, okay, it is what it is. And I did it. So you felt scared, but in hearing you say, okay, you had your support system. Did you feel relieved to do the chemo once you did the chemo? I did. I felt a thousand times better. Um, I had support from family and friends, so I knew it was going to be in my best interest just to continue this route. She told me at any time if I wanted to change, I could, but I was like, I'm still not. Surgery was never an option, was not going to be an option. We would just deal with and see what chemo does. If the long run tendon, I had to have the surgery somewhere later down the line, then that's what I would have done. But that wasn't, I knew God had me and I wasn't doing it. So I did this the chemo, scared in the process of it, like what else could go wrong? What else could happen? Mm -hmm. It was a long process. I lost my hair, my eyebrows, mm -hmm. all fit all all body hair. I was mm -hmm. like, good, that saved me point from shaving it too. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I hadn't anticipated losing my hair as mm -hmm. soon as I did. Because mm -hmm. she said it would probably happen mm -hmm. after maybe my third treatment. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. even make it to the third treatment. Mm -hmm. I made it to one and a half. Mm -hmm. Before my hair started coming out. But I was like, okay, then I ain't got to comb no hair neither too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll accept that. I'll deal with it. I can do wigs, mm -hmm. scarves, whatever. So mm -hmm. I was I was cool with it. I was comfortable. So you, I hear you saying that you was comfortable. I was comfortable. And that you possibly was relieved. A thousand a, times. That time, you know, once they did a chemo and it was, they was able to contain it. Yes. Contain the cancer. At any point. Did you feel like this was it? Like, uh, um, um, you know, you you know, hope the cancer don't return. This is it. After the chemo. Each visit. Because during the initial setup of doing the first chemo treatment, I saw the radiologist just to intend to see if there was a possibility that it would be chemo and radiation combined. She said that could be a possibility. But after seeing the radiologist, she said, it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. We would just stick with the chemo. If it came up, then they would possibly entail it as a part mm -hmm. of the treatment plan. Mm -hmm. But I had MRIs every three to six months. Mm -hmm. I would do an MRI along mm -hmm. with my chemo treatment. Mm -hmm. So the cancer had been contained in the area that it was. So she liked the prognosis she saw mm -hmm. going forward mm -hmm. each visit. It was a long process. It was an mm -hmm. eight-hour day, so to speak, because okay. I was there for like four to five hours okay. just to do the setup, the getting prepping me to get the chemo go going so okay. i i was relieved i had company okay. um laid back in the chair watched tv mm -hmm. had snacks okay. or whatever could sleep i, I was comfortable mm -hmm. and the staff was amazing that's good that's good so it sounded like to me you had a good experience yes. you know after getting your treatment plan yes. from cancer i mean your treatment plan from the diagnosis of cancer you went through you did the radiation you felt comfortable um, you had a support system. Would that be accurate? That's a thousand percent accurate. I mean, from family to my doctors and my nurses at the hospital, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It's a one-on-one -on -one with the doctor. It wasn't like, okay, I saw this doctor today, mm -hmm. and then when I go back another two weeks or whatever, see somebody else. No. She started from the beginning to the end. Okay. Well, I just want to say, you know, Thank you for allowing me, you know, for us to do this session, you know, another session, a follow-up session to actually see what the treatment plan entails and to actually hear what um, treatment plan that you had completed and how you felt and it made you feel relieved. Yes. And so we're going to, you know, have another session. Okay. That's okay with you. Yeah. And we just want to go, you know, based on after your diagnosis of what the treatment plan was, how did you actually, you know, what you also felt after 
You did the trigger plan and how to make you feel. Okay. So would that be okay? That's fine. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And You're I look forward to seeing you next time. Next time.